There's mom. That's uh, video. Oh, there. I could change the exposure on it. Okay, there we go. Oh, yeah. So, where are you headed to? Yeah. Yep. Southwest. You excited? Going with Lulu. Yes, I'm really <laughs> excited. Yes, the Lulu dog right there. Hi, Lulu. Going on your very first plane trip. All right. Well, I love you. Love you. Kisses. Ohio. Lulu already went to the pet room, pet restroom. There she is. You did good, Lulu. <laughs>
Okay, well, here it is. 2016 Ram 1500 Promaster. This is Pomeroy, uh, Ohio. Chevy Buick GMC Mark Porter. Drives great. We are all set and ready to roll home. Ohio River. Ohio. Entering downtown Pomeroy. Little River Town. There's the river. Restored the old buildings here. Reminds me of the Mississippi. They have a church here. I think it's like fourteen from the fourteen hundreds. Market and the river, river roasters, coffee. <clears throat> 
gentrified. There's the church up here on the left. It's, it's the oldest church I've ever seen. On the left here, this yellow one. Burton, Ohio. Barberton, Ohio.
Beaverton Military Honor Roll, Medal of Honor. This is a Medal of Honor town, and also matches were first developed here, according to one of their little signs. That's a good term for the computer system of this ProMaster. And everything is under OBD, which is onboard diagnostics. The body control module is the main brain of the whole thing. And under that live these various other computers. I count uh, 10 computer systems. Uh, the import And they're all green because I've just scanned them, meaning there's no codes in any of them. But we're going to go through a couple and see what's what. Powertrain control module is the engine computer, which is the most important one. ABS is the braking system. Occupant restraint heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, instrument panel cluster, tire pressure monitor. Now this one, because it has the, the low line radio, does not have a radio module. Normally the one with the screen has a computer that controls it and so on and so forth. Um, and that is related to this, which is the, the um, is it telematics or entertainment? It's telematics, it's the, the screen thing. Park assist module, this doesn't have park assist. If it had the little sensors in the bumper, that's the computer that deals with them. And no ProMaster has a transmission control module because it's all done in the PCM. So let's go in the PCM and take a look and see what we... What's this called again? Uh, powertrain control module. Okay. So what we're gonna do, what I'm gonna do is the guy assessing this is I'm gonna start it up and read some live data. What I want to know from this thing, because it's already warm, yes, it's already warmed up. I want to know the long-term, I'm sorry, I want to know the long-term fuel trim on bank one. I want to know uh, the long-term fuel trim on bank two here, short-term on bank two. Where's long-term on bank two? Am I missing it? Up at the top. There it is. Long-term bank two, I want to see short-term on bank two, on bank one, rather. The banks refer to the two different halves of the engine, the three cylinders on one side of the V and three cylinders on the other. I'm also going to look at the actual voltage coming off the oxygen sensors. One of one, it should say zero to, here we go. That's bank, bank that's, these are nomenclated as bank two sensor one, meaning the upstream oxygen sensor of, of bank two. Bank two is the uh, front one in this thing. And I need the same for one, one of two, should be one of one, zero to one. Okay, so that's oxygen sensors. I wanna see, as I'm assessing this, I wanna see what's called the actual line pressure, which is here, that's the transmission pump pressure, very important, will mostly tell you the health of your transmission. Because this thing is code free, I'm not really looking at anything specifically to be wrong because if it was wrong it would code for being wrong for instance something like the camshaft and crankshaft sync state they're not out of sync because otherwise it would have a code and it would have a code if any of these things were wrong but i just want to take a look uh i want to see engine coolant temperature because i want to know the gauge is not very accurate and it doesn't really tell you much so i want to know what the engine what the computer thinks the engine temperature is the ambient air temperature is probably right from the d dash readout. I'm going to look at all six injector pulse widths just to see if one is off with another one. That would indicate, oh, a weak cylinder, because the computer can compensate per cylinder. Um, I'm going to look at intake cam crank difference, intake cam two crank difference, and then there'll be exhaust cam differences. Uh, did I miss it because of the alphabet? There, go. there we go, yep. Yeah. Exhaust cam and exhaust cam one difference. Whoops, difference. Okay, not that it would code if it's over a certain amount, but I would like to see actually where it's at, just to, just to see if there's any issue. Oil pressure, which of course must be fine because it would code if it wasn't, but even so. And that's about it. Uh, I might look at oil temperature, voltage sense. This has a voltage reading up here, which I'll verify in a minute up at the top there. Yep, 
but I could look at it separately. All right, let's fire her up. Okay. So all this data is gonna be presented just as data. Long-term field trim, fantastic. Anything less than 10% is fine. What that refers to is it's over or under fueling each bank of cylinders uh, uh, because it's because it's always seeking a perfect mixture. Short term is it is, is that quickly. Long term is that kind of cumulatively, but not not very long. Every 20 seconds or so, it updates long term from short term. But you can see not only is Bank One short term trim uh, in very low numbers, but it's swinging between negative and positive, perfect because it's seeking zero, which would be the ideal mixture, 14.6 to one. Um, and the sensor volts are swinging like they're supposed to, centering around 0.5 volts as it as the oxygen sensor is working. Perfect. Couldn't ask for any better reading than that. Same with the bank two sensor. Same with the bank two short term trim. Or short and long term trim. That's fine. Perfectly fine. In fact, better than fine. Engine coolant temperature right where it should be. It will cycle between. It's designed to cycle between 204 and 224. When it gets hot enough, the, can, uh, the fans will kick on and it'll drop it back down to 204. That's how it regulates from the engine fans, which are electric. Exhaust cam crank difference, those are perfectly fine. Injector pulse whisk, not only are they good and basically match each other, but they're quite low, which means the engine is running efficiently. Can we stop? That's excellent. Can we pause? Sure. All right. Uh, I forgot to look at the... Actually, you know, and I looked at the oil pressure. It's perfectly fine. Okay. Select. I want to see that. Uh, what is it? It's the comp it's the um, I need actual line pressure, but I also need the uh, air conditioning. Um, what is it? I'm, I don't know why I'm blanking. That's here somewhere. I want to look at what's coming. There it is. AC high side pressure. Okay. AC high side pressure coming on. And actual line pressure is the two I forgot to okay. read. Okay. Yeah, we did use the AC. It got up to 85 in Pomeroy. Holy cow. Yeah. All right. Actual line pressure, it's going to be desiring 130. Perfect. Can't ask for more than that. It won't code until it gets below 90. So the the health of the pump is good. We're gonna test the AC system by cranking it. This pressure is gonna to rise to about 280 and then the fan will kick on. That's coming up beautifully fast. I love it. It's not going to come oh. up because it thinks it's 46 degrees outside. Yeah, I feel it now, though. Can I have it on? Uh, that will, that will okay, matter. all right. I feel it making cold, though. It's, it's working. I'm going to say in the absence of a code, let's not worry about it because it's ma it's making cold. Yep. It, the, the computer thinks the outside air temperature is 46, and it would overpressure if it's trying to make air conditioning in freezing. You know what I mean? So it protects itself. It, it's Here it goes. It's pumped up over 200, and it's, it's working its way. It's working. All right, let's take a look at some other things. Come on with me, we're gonna go under the hood. I'm gonna plug back in your T-Mobile doohickey. Okay. My son is tracking me. That's right. <laughs> You're not paranoid if they're really out to get you. <laughs> I want to make sure I'm doing everything I'm supposed to. <laughs> All right. Okay. As I'm looking around here, what I'm looking at is for evidence of old, the, the leaky oil cooler, which looks like it's never leaked. That's good news. And I'm looking for just evidence of coolant leaks. And I'm looking just to see if there's anything out of place. This water that's here on top of the intake manifold, I'm gonna fix that for you. What causes that? This. I'm just gonna run a stripe of Gorilla Tape here. And this 
water intrusion point, which gets in behind the windshield uh -huh. there, is um, it runs down here, it goes there, and it actually causes a couple of common problems. So, but literally one piece of Gorilla Tape will fix that for the most part. All right. Your bottle, these are notorious for cracking. This one is not, so I would guess this has been replaced at some point in its life. But the bottle looks fine. And I'm gonna guess that it's not losing any coolant. That's one thing I'll have you check. Over the next few days of ownership, just once a day, come out and, and note the level of the coolant in the bottle. Okay. We're looking for it to be leaking. I don't see any evidence of leaks right now. So, see one tiny thing, super small, right here. I don't know if you can see with my hand in the way, but in this interface between, see that pink area? So what that is, is a thing called the coolant crossover tube. I call it the dick, and if you saw it, you'd know why. That pink residue is just a little bit of coolant. It's a common leak, but it's very rare that that leaks enough to affect anything. But if you smell coolant when you open the hood, Look there first and see if that's fresh. Oh. That's not a particularly expensive fix, a few hundred dollars, but I wouldn't do anything about it until it becomes, because that amount of leakage will drain this bottle in 10 years. It's so uh, small. Okay. But if, if uh, so I wouldn't really worry about it. I'm gonna do one other thing while we're here. Let's see if I can get tight on that. Tight shot. There you go. Oh, okay, yeah. Yep. It's just a very small amount of, and, and that amount is a hundred and whatever thousand miles, so. It's not super. Okay, I got it. Super yeah. Super massive. Got it. Okay, cool. All right. Let me check it. another, just glance at a couple of things while we're here. This is your power steering reservoir, and they very rarely give any trouble. That one's a tiny bit low. We'll add some to that. Okay. If it's low, it's usually because this hose right here is leaking, and yours is not. Where's that hose? This these two hoses are for the power steering cooler. Neither is leaking, but this upper one is a common leak point. Okay. But this is fine, so. Okay, I don't know why that's, a, I mean, we're talking ounces low, not gallons. Okay, got it. Thanks. But I'll fill that up. Let's look at the brake fluid. I can't imagine. We almost never, ever see any issue with brake fluid, and I don't see one here. Okay. And you would know, because you would be having braking problems. That's it looks like they marked it, look. That's factory. Oh, is that? Yep. That's okay. never been turned until I turned it. <laughs> By the way, for future knowledge, that's your. This is your positive jump point. Oh. And this is your negative jump point. If you need to jump it, that's a, just a convenient place to get it. Oh, good to know. Yeah, rather than getting to the battery under the floor. Otherwise, everything looks exactly as it should. I see mo almost all. I do see all factory hose clamps, meaning it's never had its cooling system apart. I don't see any rust back there. Yeah, that's all factory. That's never been a part. That's never been a part. And it has never had the, the oil cooler leak. I want to look at one other thing that will... Oh, thank the Lord. Me. What a blessing. <laughs> oh, man. This is a fancy UV light because oh. usually the coolant has UV dye in it so that if it does leak, you can find it easily. See how oh. that kind of phosphorus. And you can see a, a residue a very old, a little bit of that green phosphorescence from, yeah. you know, just from being around. That's a cool way. Yeah, this is the way to find leaks in anything. Well, have to get one. Yeah. $7 on Amazon for a little black, black light pen light. Right. Plus fun at raves. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, know how, I know how much you like to party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not seeing any, anything of concern. I'll go underneath it here in a second. Another place where they leak is the radiator seam, and this one looks fine. Yeah, it looks fine. All right. Let me go under and glance at it, and then we're pretty much done except for refilling that fluid. Oh, good deal. I had one little. other question I noticed about the van. Sure. It's just in the back. The mm -hmm. way it's lifted, is that normal yes. for that? Okay. Yes. They sit really high in the ass. Okay, that's fine. A long one. time ago, this had a coolant leak. 
some minor leak, probably the bottle, maybe, I don't know. But, so there's a little residue, but nothing, and nothing fresh, which is what counts. Right. This thing's fine. Yep. Oh, yeah. Everything else looks good. Okay. We put literally a splash of power steering fluid in there. Okay. Well, you get a big shot of, we're in Kip's Pro Master only YouTube channel garage, Barberton, Ohio, folks. Oh, let me see what um, brand all this is here. I, I have a video on all these fluids. Oh, of course. <laughs> uh, this power steering fluid is quite special, meaning it's not just normal power steering fluid, but they sell it at AutoZone. It's crazy expensive, but luckily you almost never need any. I mean, you'll go years and years and years before you. Where do you get it from? Uh, this I got from Rock Auto. It's the same stuff they sell it at, uh, the, at uh, AutoZone or dealership. Okay. And it is nasty smelling. I don't know what it's made of. Something horrible. But the there is a dipstick built into the cap, so. I do want to spill this. Hope it don't fail. Perhaps I should commit to a funnel. <laughs> this is not really sweet. <laughs> I see all your teaching diagrams. Yeah. They're, for, they're familiar. <laughs> I literally put an ounce or two in there. Okay, Not very, very much cool. It was on the stick. Now it's right at the right at the min. I'll add a little bit more and we're done. Lulu's learning all about ProMasters. <laughs> oh, just while we're here, It helps if you put it on the right way. <laughs> you have to, but it helps. <laughs> That's interesting. There should be a little, a little um, loopy brackets kind of thing that, that holds oh, that on. Oh, something wiggle. A, yeah, I'm just gonna put a zip tie on it. It probably got broken from you know over the years of filling it. Zip tie won't fix. I know, we have stock in zip tie. <laughs> in <right>. duct tape. <laughs> you want that vice grips and that's all the handy you'd ever need. That's it. This modification will not affect fuel economy. <laughs> Talk on it. I wish it would. <laughs> Increase miles per hour or per gallon. Let's take a look at. Uh, Check the oil while I'm here, and we'll check the transmission fluid. Oil is fresh and full. Transmission fluid, I'm just going to find out. I don't have to go through the whole procedure to check its level because it, does, it hasn't been leaking and it's not malfunctioning, so why would the level be off? But I want to look at the condition of the fluid. Oh, I know. I remember this video. <laughs> yeah. I just want to see the if it's... The long white zip tie. 
if it's excessively burnt. Now, where is that little hole you're putting so in? So it's tricky, but there's a tube, a normal, the transmission filled tube. You'll have very difficult to see it from the top. Uh, I'm gonna follow your hand yeah, you yeah. might see it, but I don't think so. You okay. can follow my hand, though. You can try. Okay. All right. I am in the tube now, and I'm using this three foot long zip tie right. because it's white and the fluid shows up against it. This fluid is a little bit dark, but not much, not totally abnormal. That's not an accurate level. It's because it's not running. It's backed up into the into the tube. It smells good. Can I would you put your light on that hole down there? I don't know if you'll be able You can see it from the bottom more easily. Oh, okay. Um, I'll do it later. Yeah. I, there's we'll a, do a, yeah, we'll there's add. There's a lot of it. It's, it's a tube with a cap on the top, and you would find it. Gotcha. I would recommend that you change that fluid within the next 30,000 miles should be fine. All right. So how often should I change it? Every 30,000? Every 60. And every what? Every 60,000. Oh, so really? Yeah. I, and what you, oil? Oh, what oil to use? Yeah. 5W20. I use the Pennzoil. Um, they sell it everywhere. Pennzoil Full Synthetic. Pennzoil Platinum, it's called. Um, I've had very good luck with that. I don't I don't see any reason and it's relatively cheap. Right. And they sell it sell it at Walmart, they sell it everywhere. Cool. And it works great. Yay. Alright. This is glance at tires and suspension and then we'll go road test it and that'll be that. These tires are Coopers, which are medium to good, but this one has a lot of tread. It's it's not a budget tire, but it's it's a working man's tire, the Cooper. Okay, good. <laughs> it's not the fanciest and it's not the cheapest, but it's a very good tire. And it matches this one. They've got very nice, these are almost brand, not brand new, but within a few thousand miles of new. Okay. And they're wearing evenly. The back is older. It's possible that these tires lived on the front for a while and then they got rotated before okay. the thing got sold. Right. But they're not cupping. They're fine. Okay. The other side. Does that look like that was the front one maybe too? Yeah. Uh, well, no, this one looks almost new too. Maybe just one is, I don't know, maybe they rotated with the spare. Or something. I don't know. Is the spare under there? Not all of them. Have yes, it. it has a spare. This is. Have a spare? That looks very new to me. Okay. The spare is original. Okay. <laughs> it's fine. Okay. And all in here, shocks are good. They're not leaking. Okay. We have very, very little trouble with the rear end of these. Oh, good. These tires on here, because it's front wheel drive, can easily get 200,000 miles out of these tires. Okay. You'll get, you know, everybody has their own thing. Either you rotate them or you don't. Up to you. I prefer not to rotate them. I just change the fronts when they wear out. Brakes are fine. So when you say you change just the fronts when they wear out, then you just get brand new ones with fronts? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because the rears la will last. I mean, I don't know how much you plan to drive, but I guess you're not going to go a, a lot. lot. Oh, yeah? Well, a lot to me is like 130000 a year. I doubt you'll grow that much. Okay. And assuming you don't, the rears will last for years and years and years. All right. They basically, because the front does all the work. Ah. That makes sense, of course. This has, this has its original struts, but the brakes are have been done relatively recently. I can tell that because of the amount of pad on there, and I can tell that because there's a little rust on the lug nuts. Uh, meaning they have been agitated at some point in its life, as you would expect. It's got a hundred and whatever. But otherwise, I don't see anything. All right, let me get my glasses. And we're going to go for a spin. Okay. The butt of jokes, Arbiton was, for, for a hundred years. I put that back in. That's just going to fall out again, but that's all right. It's working. It's fine. Let's not overthink this. Um, we can... But Barberton gentrified in the last 10 years or so. Barberton was to Akron what West Virginia is to Ohio. <laughs> or Ypsilanti is to Detroit. <laughs> uh, I'm sure every town has its 
has its jokes, but it's cute. It's a cute little town. It's it's cute. Now. It's cute now. It was it was less cute. The locals call it Barber Tucky or West Bar Virginia. <laughs> so I'm what I'm doing is I'm rotating the wheel lock to lock, and I'm listening for looseness in the in the struts. I don't I don't hear or feel anything. They feel perfectly good. The the struts that are in there are factory struts. That doesn't. They looked original to me, but I could be wrong. Maybe they're going to replace it sometime, but they're definitely smooth. Now, you guys are on your own for little stuff like, you know, latches and, and this little broken thing. Right. Non-critical. Right. So I told the dealer down there in Pomeroy at um, Mark Porter, mm -hmm. he's got like three dealerships. I was telling him about the ProMaster only YouTube channel guru, Kip. <laughs> I said, he's a U.S. guru for the ProMasters. <laughs> All right. Power is good. Shifting is good. Gauges are good. Alignment is good. All these things are, I would be surprised if you got here with any of those being severely deficient. I did notice that about Ohio Road uh, streets, especially here in this oh, little yeah. town, and also where I just was in Canton. Oh yeah. Uh, what I'm listening for is rattle, rattling or crashing over bumps, which would indicate ball joints or uh, tie rod ends or sway bar end links or anything like that. I don't hear anything. It's tight. Okay. okay. feel fine as you would expect they're, they're basically the pads are 90 percent power is good she's quiet it's shifting smooth and fine Bought it online. <laughs> well, Sight unseen. I think you got a good one. Oh, I'm not, that's... There's zero red flags here, zero codes. I don't know if it was, Thank you. If it was well maintained or it's just one of the lucky ones that. Yeah, the two previous owners apparently, you know, had all the records, so that's what it takes. There's shockingly little to do in a vehicle this modern compared to an old vehicle. You're to change the oil and you're to service the plugs every hundred thousand spark plugs every hundred thousand miles and the transmission every sixty to eighty thousand miles. And that's it. Okay. Everything else is just fix it if and when it breaks. Right. That's not to say they're problem free, but they're they're kind of maintenance free. Alright, I want to check one thing. We have seen problems with the left turn signal canceller thing. That is a that problem. One works fine. Now it's working for you. Yep. Before I was, maybe it's because I was helping it. I don't know, all along the way. This could be. It, but, feel, it feels a little bit loose compared to stock, but not much. So all the lights work and all that. This one does not have cruise control. Nope. There is a um, aftermarket cruise control called the Rusta, R-O-S-T-A. Um, very nice people who uh, install it. I prefer the, this place in Michigan, okay. which uh, I'm happy to turn you on to, but it's not a particularly difficult install. Um, Sounds good. That's what we do want. Three hundred bucks or something, and yeah, you you want um, cruise control. Yeah, my leg was getting tired. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's almost anything that makes you more comfortable while driving is yeah. safe. Is a because it makes you less likely to fall asleep. Right, but the seats here are really comfortable, and I'm surprised because I'm small, and a lot of times work vehicles are too big for me. But this mm -hmm. is perfect. So this is the basis seat they sell. Most okay. of them have a height. Like a up and down. The ass goes down and the and the thigh goes up. Okay. This one does not have that, nor does it have the heater. Not the best. But if you can get comfortable in this, I mean, 
it's not a huge range of motion anyway. But yeah, we were gonna put the swivels on. Yeah, that's nice. It's it's a feature. It's you can. I'm fat and I can fit through there. It's up to you. No, because we're gonna turn this into my RV. Oh, okay. Yeah. You're gonna make a dining room set. <laughs> well, so I don't four know. People can come over to my van. And <laughs> it's gonna be part work truck, part living. It's just ready for action. No, you gotta stay here. Come on. Stay. Or keep it there. Stay, Lulu. We bred you to be like this. <laughs> it's not your fault. It's our fault. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take it personal. <laughs> All right. Awesome. All right, that's well, that. let me get you. Um, can you, will you take a video of us, please? Take a picture, Paul. Yeah, in front of the van. Yeah, sure. Um, take a picture. I'm gonna get my coffee. Take her phone and take a picture. Yes, sir. <laughs> I don't know how you work with Android. Okay. You've been watching him on his YouTube channel. I have, I have. That's how I found him. Okay. Can I declare this van? Ow. Yay! Okay, so you see how I have it. That's where this, you want it. Yeah. If you hold, it just keep holding it for a little while. Right there. Oh, masters only. Don't touch that. Well, yeah, that's what shoots it. No, no, the, we're doing video. Oh, okay. See, we're shooting video for a minute. Okay. ahead. <laughs> it's supposed to have a tri red triangle on the back of there. Ohio, oh, Home Depot, Goose Crossing. Over to the right is a nest. There must be eggs there. Okay, we're just gonna go slow. Stop. Okay. There we go. Lulu, are you at Love's for the night with your mom? And you're this a traveler. You're a traveler. You have your traveling outfit on, huh? You're such a good traveler, Lulu. Are you peeking? Hi, good girl. Hi there. Hi, baby. <laughs> okay, so this is where we are for the night. 
Oh my goodness. My van inside. Got my food hanging and that's where I sleep. This is airing up and then that mattress goes on or that that bag goes on and then I have another I just bought this bag, a mummy bag, and this bag, and then I have another roll I just bought. And there's some more of my food, my salad. And this is my kitchen. <laughs> and this is my bathroom. <laughs> my bathroom. <laughs> oh, shoot. And I'll have covers for these windows tonight. Oh, I got covers for all these windows. So, that's it. The girls are traveling. Hi. <laughs> this is me and my van. Okay, so I'm going to walk outside and show you around my van, okay? All right, hold on. I hope I'm videoing everything. I put it on wide angle. Okay, this is for you, Susie. Okay. This is my van. Lulu in the front seat. She's my co-pilot, you see? That's Lulu. Hi, Lulu. <laughs> After that. Hopefully this is working. Yep, that's it. Ram Pro Master. This is it. I just got it. And I love, love, love it. We're in Cleveland, Ohio, and this is the Edgewater Yacht Club. Interesting that they've got a lot of these boats shrink wrapped. I was thinking that they were like new boats, but they're not. They're just boats on the hard that are shrink wrapped. Pretty cool. Now that's the city of Cleveland in the back with all the big buildings. There's a good chop on the water today, and it's um, cold. It's 39 degrees. It's April 7, 2023. So that's the marina and now we are going to the that's a pier and concession and now we're going to go to the other part the edgewater beach lake erie water trail this is really pretty this is the prettiest part i've seen so far is along the lake well done get down to the water they're supposed to, there's a beach with sand straight ahead and they've got like a little pavilion area get out of the sun and stuff and have picnics here very windy Ugh. some old buildings in Cleveland in the background right hopefully I don't get frostbite on my hands beach 
Ranch House. Shops, everything's closed right now. We have bathrooms. They have porta johns. So that's not the time to see them. Lake Erie. And to the west of Cleveland, Ohio will be Indiana and then you've got Illinois and then Lake Michigan. Oh, this is beautiful. Dipping my toe in the water. Give you an accurate temperature. I feel it put in the water. <laughs> there we go. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> yeah, it's icy. Icy cold. So dirty. Ugh. Beach feet. <laughs> it is beautiful. This is a beautiful place. Huh. Beautiful. Lulu, did you just finish your lunch? Huh? It looks like your lunch is still on your lips. <laughs> oh, all right, we're sitting here in Flying J. We're about 25 miles north of NetJets, so we're going to stop there, check it out. And just taking a break, eating some olive tepanade hummus with my Passover matzah. Okay. All right. See you later. Say see you later. Say see you later.
go. Then resell them. Arrive at National Corvette Museum. Arrived.
Yeah, she rides in the Corvette with my son and I. <laughs> She's a world traveler. <laughs> Okay, well, Lulu and Mommy, we went to the Lulu and Mommy. We went to the Corvette Museum, and Mommy got me a Cor National Corvette Museum patch, and it's going to go right on the back of Lulu's. Fab dog racing outfit. <laughs> Did you have fun at the museum, Lulu? You saw all the Corvettes of every age. Wow, it was so exciting. Yeah. You, you got to see all kinds of people, huh? Lots of people at the museum. <gasps> Were there lots of people at the museum? And you and you enjoyed it? Awesome, Lulu. Would you recommend the museum to everyone? Okay, the tail's wagging, that means yes. Well, it was the Tennessee River. to be on my lap so you can bark some more. I think you have a good view from there. Oh, here comes some more. Here they come. Here comes some more. Just a minute, Lulu. It'll be all right. What, Lulu? There's somebody. Look. 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 Where'd the people? Where'd the people go? Where are they? We're at the travel. There's lots of people here. They're going to go night night. What's wrong? You need to come over here. You want to come here? Okay, one minute. Uh, one minute. One minute. One minute. Let, let me help you. Fab dog. <laughs> Fab dog. Fab dog. Okay, inside of my vehicle. Dashboard. Okay, this is my spoon, my flashlight, my key, Lulu's fork, my hat, U-Haul with graffiti. <laughs> There's a girl driving that Penske. Okay, what else do we have here? Then we have floorboard, water bottle, and the one on the with the orange is what I wash things with. Water, pedals. We have the windshield cover, wipes for Lulu's feet. 
And they also have soap down there to wash dishes with. Okay, this is the bathroom. Bathroom area, pee pads. My pee bottle's in that bag. <laughs> that's my wipes. And that's a paper towel. And here you go, inside of my van, I have windows in the back. And all the way in the back is my salad, my refrigerator. And here's my sleeping bag. And um, one bag has food in it and one bag has bungee cords and trash bags. And another windshield or wind, window cover and toilet paper and my brown bag for my clothing. Over there is my bag with um, dirty clothes. And then the black bag is what all of the sleep sleeping camping gear goes in. And down here is extra supplies. And this is Kleenex box, but basically it is for Lulu so she can step down from here to here. Because <laughs> otherwise it's quite a jump for her. And this is Lulu's carry place. And here's mine, my seat. Okay, now I will take you outside. Lulu, stay in your bed. I'll be right back. All right, so this is what I have, a Ram 1500 Pro Master. It is what's called a short wheel base. See, it fits in a parking spot. And I can stand in it. And now other ones have like a higher top, a high top for people taller than 5'2". <laughs> okay. Okay. This is it. I didn't even notice those lights work. <laughs> Anyway, that's the slider door and the back door. And it's up high in the rear. You can see it from this way here. It's up high a little bit here in the rear. And um, that's intentional. Uh, it's front wheel drive. And I took it over to Kip and he said that it was a good deal and he put it through all the tests and he put it through diagnostics and all kinds of other things. So anyway, yeah, there you go. So hashtag van life. Woohoo! Uh, sleep. There's the uh, certified cat scales and those are what we took the boat and the truck and we weighed them. We weighed the uh, boat and trailer and then coming back we weighed the boat, the trailer. I mean we weighed the... We weighed the truck and the trailer going, and then we weighed the truck, trailer, and boat coming home. And so here's pilot, gas station, and then in the back you can see there uh, all the way is where the semis park here at this particular lot. Yeah. So you got to come in early because you see how about two hours before nighttime, there's only three spots here empty and then maybe a couple over on the other side of that yellow truck and then there's a couple over there and that's it in this lot well there's a couple more over there that's called like a drive through um, for rvs or any long extended um, vehicles okay there's a, a girl that just came in oh she's got a florida tag she's driving a uh mercedes sprinter it looks like high top that's a high top and her windows are blocked in the back, so. Well, actually, it looks like she has no windows. Maybe she's going to come back. Now, see, she parked, and she's got a long wheelbase, so see, she had to park over there. If she parked here where I am, her nose would be sticking out another couple feet. That's why I got the short one, the shorty. Okay, and we are in um, just outside of Memphis, east of Memphis. I got about 220 plus miles to go home, but I just I was just like, I'm tired. I'm going to sleep because the only other loves on the other side of Arkansas, um, I think they're still working in it and I haven't looked at it, so I didn't really want to stop there. And I was like, no, it's an hour out and it's getting dark. Anyway, you can see that they sell Chester's Chicken and they sell Subway. 
and Chester's chicken is to die for. It tastes so good. Right there, Chester's chicken and the subway. Okay, anyway, yep, that's it for the night right now. Anything exciting, I'll send it your way. Okay, Susie Q. This is your sister. Your traveling sister. My travel hat. See, little. My anchor. And then this is Lulu, my co pilot. And this is our rig. <laughs> and Lulu is announcing the arrival and departure of everyone. <laughs> I think she may do this when I'm gone and I leave her in the van. I don't know, but I think, like, if I go into the bathroom in the inside pilot, <laughs> I think she does this. Oh, shoot, man. She's funny. Yep. Love and life. This is great. I love this. Oh, my gosh. The amount of freedom. It's, it's wonderful. So I'm taking 40 West. My remaining. Ciao. Arrival of an ambulance. What's that say? Something county. They came in with their lights blazing. I don't know who got called for what. We'll see. We're going to video it. Fayette County, Tennessee. Fire Department. Oh, they're looking. Medical squad. Shh. They're doing work. Back, be quiet. Somebody might have gotten hurt or something. They're trying to find out who it is. And where? He, he keeps going around. Somebody call him. Oh, it's over on the other side of the building, I guess. Well, she's going to go find out. This lady in the truck. I don't know, Lulu. Need to pray for him right now, whoever needs the prayer. We just say, put your prayers. Say prayers. All right, put your hands together. Let's pray. Okay, come here. Hold my hand. All right, put your hands here. Come here. Put your paws up here. Say a prayer. Dear Lord, please take care of the person. Don't let them get hurt. Now pray they know Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. That was a nice prayer, Lulu. Thank you for praying, Lulu. Yeah. And here comes another van, a Mercedes. Okay, he's he looks like an expediter. Yep, yep, he is. He's coming in here tonight. He's back all the way in. Yep, he's sleeping next here.
How do you like your journey? It looks amazing. Thank you. Good job. Good job. It's the short. This is a uh, uh, 2016 Ram Pro Master 1500. You're saying uh, what? Ram Pro Master 1500 2016 short wheelbase. Nice. I love it. I Easy love it. PC turns out a dime. Change. <laughs> I love it. It definitely looks, you know, I thought the longer and the taller version would work, but this is definitely looking like there's a lot more room than the Dodge Caravan. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Wanna see the back? Wanna see inside? Yeah, yeah. Take me for a tour. Yeah, I'm getting the custom window shades because um, this is, um, I don't like, these will scratch your metal. And um, <clears throat> but anyway, so the way I have it set up is um, the kitchen's up there on the far left, the bathroom's on the far right, my bedroom's in the middle, my clothes closet. Oh, there. stand up in it. Oh, yeah, sure. Off. Take your shoes off when you come in my house. <laughs> mm -hmm. And how tall are you? I'm five two. Touch the roof. Touch the uh, beam. Oh, looks like you have at least a good what five inches. Maybe four. four. And then, uh, and then up front. Yeah, but um, the ram is on a little slope because it's higher in the rear so right for when they put weight in the back it yeah. lines out so i ended up like i would slide down my sleeping pad right mm -hmm. I, look how many pants i have i have this one this one this one this one it was freaking cold up there in ohio <laughs> by lake erie it was yeah. cold <sighs> so how was uh so nice how, was, how are the people at one. how are the people at the dealership where you got this from? Oh, they were awesome. Jesse, awesome. Megan, awesome. At uh, Mark Porter, right in and, uh, Pomeroy, Ohio. Perfect. The guys were great. I took this up to Kip. Yeah, let me check out the Pro Masters here. only, and he checked it out for me. And he said, good to go. So, we're good to go. Oh, okay. So, here's so this my... Is, it is a floor mat there. Here's my cup. Those are floor mats. No, they aren't. Yeah, those are floors. That's not metal. It's rubber, but it's not like a mat mat. It's a, it's yeah, rubber. it is. That's a floor, those are floor mats. Well, I, I'm i going to get... What is that called, that product? Uh, WeatherTech. Water, yeah. WeatherTech, but, yeah. I'm gonna have that come in because I don't like stepping on this and on these. Right. And these are my shower shoes. And this is Lulu's. And this oh, you is have a lot of space in here. A ton. I'm standing up in it, and I'm five. Uh, you stand up straight? Yeah, I'm five nine, three quarter, almost five ten. No, almost standing up straight. Almost. So if you if we added a ceiling, two inches. Yeah. I yeah. But not too bad because I mean most of the time you're standing up you're only moving from the front to the back, you know. Right. And um and even then you kind of bent I always just this watch out, watch out for food. This looks clean. It's real clean. That's a my, uh, this is my kitchen. My kitchen sink. And well my kitchen sink's down there, that blue tub. Then I have my water bottle. And look at all the places to put cups. One, two, three. Have four. you looked underneath this? No, no. Not okay, yet. yeah, no, that four, just five, looks like a. Um, six. six water cup, or six cup holders. Nice. Very, the only thing about this van, I will have to have a, um, add a uh, cruise control. 
but it doesn't have all of the um, bells and whistles. It just does what you need it to do as a work truck, but that's all I need. You know, it's great. It yeah. has a tow haul, you know, and it has, um, this is all around door locks. So the 1500s, the powertrain and the transmission, the engine and the transmission are exactly the same as the 2500s. And the 3500s, right. the only thing different are the front struts. The rear leaf springs are exactly the same. So if anybody's out there and wondering what the difference is, nothing. Even the lug bolt pattern on the wheels are the same. My dirty dishes are like, ah, you have to untwist this, so I yeah. don't, that's why I don't want to... Well, I want to look at what's yeah, under there. Yeah, but I'm sticking my hand it. under there. Just let me feel what's under there. Okay. I don't know. You hit it's to... just a pad. Well, access thing. It's supposed to be locked. Here, let me put this over my dishes. Look at this. Uh, this I have a surprise for you. Oh, what's that? Close your eyes. Okay. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Okay, let me guess. Don't guess. Okay. Okay. Ta-da! Oh! <laughs> National Corvette Museum. Yep. Lulu's got a patch for yep. herself. She has racing stripes and fab dog on fab her. Fab dog. Nice. Fabulous dog. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to sew that on there. That's cute. Yeah, that was a nice museum. Yeah. Very beautiful. Ooh. Oh, and it had military discount which was different price from the senior discount and then regular adult and then children. So that was a good deal. And it was like, what, 15 bucks? Uh, for me, it was... General 13, mission. I think, for me, as military. And, and this then, was on a Sunday too, right? A, no, Saturday. Saturday, Saturday. And then, so with... I saved five bucks going in because normally it's 18. So mm -hmm. I, I bought the patch. I was like, okay. Anyway, nice. Yeah. How much was the patch? Five. Oh, five bucks? Cool. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, it has... Um, the gauges work great. Everything works wonderfully. The only thing I didn't know how to do... Where did I put my key? Sure. The only thing I didn't know how to do was to change the time. And... Here, you want to take a picture of the... Oh, it says rear door open. Let me no, go shut it. I don't. Huh? No, I don't. Oh, okay. All right, well, thank you for the van tour. I'm going to go use the bathroom. <laughs> Not my bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, the one in the house. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Did be home. Excited to go back on the road as soon as possible. <laughs> Yeah, it's a good party.